So I'd just like to welcome everyone to that's joined us this afternoon. Thank you so very much. People are still continuing to join us um, and I'm sure that will happen for a few more minutes yet. We are so very pleased to be celebrating the end of a very exciting three year project called Dementia Adventure in a Box. This is an hour webinar. We're gonna talk about the project, its impact and look at two particular case studies we will also consider the legacy and what's next for Dementia Adventure. We're really happy to answer any questions you have today, but what we're going to do is ask you to use the Q&A box to actually ask formal questions to the panel. Uh, we won't be monitoring the chat at all, but you know, introduce yourselves to other people on the line, please feel free to do that, but any formal questions please put them in the Q&A box. We are recording the session today and you would have seen a warning as you entered the session. Uh, a link to this recorded version will be sent to yourself via email for anyone that signed in for today. Um, it will also be available on our YouTube channel uh, in a couple of days time. Now, for those of you that really want to go into much more detail about the, 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 you know, the content of the project, our project report will actually be uh, or is now online on our research page of our website. So Dementia Adventure in a web browser and up we pop. So please do feel free to look at that report and any of the other material uh, research we mentioned today will also be on our website. Now, I'm so pleased to be able to introduce our panel for today. Um, they're with us to answer Hi, questions. Please leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, or if you need to contact the head office in Essex, please Kath, call Kath, would you mind just uh, muting yourself? Perfect. That's lovely. Uh, super stuff. My, my apologies for that. So the panel. So the people are here to introduce themselves and answer questions, but to really talk about their stories um, and what the project brought to people living with dementia in their local areas. And this is really key for us. So the panel today, uh, Lorraine, Lorraine Brown, you've just joined us. Uh, lovely to see you. Good afternoon. So Lorraine is a dementia ambassador. She has a background in mental health. She works closely with Medway Dementia Action Alliance and is a panelist on the Three Nations Dementia Working Group. Lorraine really champions the message of spending time in nature. She is living with dementia and has been absolutely fundamental in the pro this project's success. We've got Sarah McCormack with us. Uh, she's the Live at Home Community Program Coordinator for Methodist Homes Association in Leeds. Sarah will talk about how they delivered an intergenerational program of nature experiences, drawing on forest school skills. We've got Jerry Fouracres with us, who manages the farm and activities program at Scrub Ditch Care Farm, Gloucestershire. She will highlight how they successfully involve people living with dementia and their key supporters in everyday farm activities. We have Paula, Paula Nelson with us, and Paula was responsible for managing the overall project from start to end. Paula really was involved in the day-to-day -day detail and knows the project inside out, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot of questions for you today, Paula. We have Kath Pike, uh, a project coordinator for Dementia Adventure. Kath has over 20 years experience of working in the environmental sector in community engagement, education, information projects, with a real focus on connecting people to nature. And me, uh, Debbie Anderson, another project coordinator. I've worked for Dementia Adventure for five years, um, but before that worked with people living with dementia and their supporters for many years in a variety of roles within the voluntary sector. Now, just before we kick off, as a reminder, any questions at all, please put those in the Q&A box. And I'm now going to hand over to Kath. Thanks, Debbie. Well, hello, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. 
So just a few words about Dementia Adventure for those of you who, who don't know us. We're a small national charity based in Essex and we've been running for 12 years now. And this is our mission. We are all about enabling people living with dementia to get outdoors, connect with nature and their community and, and retain a sense of adventure and choice in, in their lives. And this is what we do, but, but how do we do that? And we link people and organisations together. We make sure the voices of people living with dementia are part of that process so that their needs and wishes are at the front of decisions and planning. Our work is about education. It's about challenging stigma and it's about expanding the vision of what's possible for, um, and it's about standing the, expanding the vision of what's possible for opportunities outdoors and getting closer to nature. As well as this, Dementia Adventure runs supported holidays for a person living with dementia and someone they know well. And the, these holidays have been put on hold for now, but we will be running them again when it's safe to do so. So back to the, the project and why Dementia Adventure in a Box? How did this project come about? Well, um, it was obviously over the years through the work of the charity we have seen and we've been told by people living with dementia about the huge benefits of contact with nature in the outdoors and how it can make a real difference to people's lives. And part of that approach is, is about looking at positive risk taking to bring more choice and meaning into people's lives. So over the last few years, Dementia Adventure carried out research with partners and a couple of the reports which were published with Natural England are available on our website. And um, you, they're there for, and on our website for those of you if you want to look a little bit further. But what we wanted to do was take our learning and what we were doing um, further. We didn't want to do it on our own and we couldn't do it on our own, but we wanted to join up with other organisations so that they could um, they could run their own nature nature programs indoors and out. So we put together a lottery bid and uh, the aim is, is written up there, just more opportunities and choice with support out, outdoors. And we were very pleased to be awarded a three year funding from the National Lottery under their community fund programme. Now, one of the outcomes of the project was recording the voices of people living with dementia, which we will hear about um, in a little bit more detail later. But it would, we thought it'd be really good to start right here because this next clip is, is all about the reason we do what we do. And we know that lives, people living with dementia can narrow with a diagnosis with dementia. And we spend more than a disproportionate amount of time inside after a diagnosis. So here's Chris and Jane who, who live in North Wales. They love to go outdoors. And here, here they are, here's Chris talking about the importance of nature to him. Now I need to change the settings over uh, uh, with our technology here. So um, just bear with me while I do that so that you get the best quality coming across. And then um, I will also need to change it back at the end. And I, I sometimes go out in the garden to sit down and have a few tears on my own. Um, I'm not going to get disturbed. I'm not going to be embarrassed. And it's something I do now and again. And the other day I was doing it, I don't know if it's the other day, maybe the other week, and a hedgehog came out. And immediately I was distracted from my anxiety, my stress, my depression. I didn't have dementia. I didn't have any problems at all. And that's what nature does for you. It distracts you. It's beautiful. It doesn't ask anything of you. It just displays itself and, and is there for our appreciation. He was just in the moment, just him and this hedgehog just walking past. Just, was it two feet? Just two feet yeah. away from him? Yeah, yeah. And it just got on with its life. And I just sat there and I watched him going backwards and forwards and even the cat come across. And the cat was watching it as well. It's obviously had dealings with the hedgehog because he didn't go for it. But even the cat was watching as well. And, 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 and I now go out and I look for these things now. And it, it's beautiful. It, it's, there is no, uh, you don't fail. You don't succeed. You just observe. And there's no... There's no um, um, pressure. pressure. There's no pressure. The, 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 it's just there for you to appreciate and distract you. 
and you are normal again. You know, you're not that person with, with dementia. You don't have any problems at all. And I think that goes for any anyone and everyone. So pow powerful words there from um, Chris. He says, it's just there to appreciate and distract you and you're normal again. You're not that person with dementia. And, and this is something we hear time and time again. So um, just a few words about how the project worked. What, what we did was Dementia Adventure teamed up with four national partners and that involved two, two partners from the care home sector and two from green, two green space organisations. And I, I've listed them here. So um, TCV, the conservation volunteers who, who connect people and green spaces. And some of you will have heard about the, the Green Gym sort of wellbeing programme that they run. And then social farms and gardens, which, uh, which supports communities to farm and garden together. And they are a network of farms and gardens all over the country too. And then the two care homes or two care care organisations, Methodist Homes Association and Abbeyfield. And what happened was then each, each partner then, then picked six to eight locations, um, again nationally, so in different parts of the country, and they brought, put together a list of staff from those different areas to, to set up this, natural, uh, this national programme. And um, we've got some lovely pictures here, which just gives you a flavour of some of that outdoors side of things and, and some indoors. And, and how we really tried to focus on crafts that were natural, nature-based, simple things that could be done just as much indoors as well as outdoors. And sorry, just go back one. And, and Dementia Adventures' role with this, um, with the organisation, was to do face-to-face -face training, tailored and supported to what was needed with them. We looked particularly at uh, that positive risk-taking we talked about to to provide more more choice and opportunity. We looked at increasing staff confidence and skills to get more engagement, more connection with nature outdoors, particularly focused on the importance of the senses and um, you know, how that, that lovely multi-sensory experience outdoors. And, um, and, and always right from the start, we looked at how you could bring in the, the voices and wishes of people with dementia right from the start, that, that sort of co-production, that, that getting people together right from the beginning. So um, in summary, uh, 44 locations over the country, over 3,000 experiences for people living with dementia and, and family people, and um, 60 plus staff and volunteers, volunteers as well, trained, trained nationally. Now I'd like to show you a, a film from the project, this, this, this lovely film, and it, it looks more closely at what we did. You will actually get to see Paula, Jerry and Sarah, our, our panellists, will be speaking later about that. Once again, I need to change over those settings, so just you'll just hear a few clicks while I sort that out and then we will play that film. Paula, I work for Dementia Adventure and for the last two and a half years I've been managing a project working across the country with organisations to help them get people who are living with dementia outside and enjoying and engaging with nature. walk round the forest and it's it's just open space it's it's wonderful and it's um, very uplifting you see other people relaxing and enjoying themselves when maybe they were worried at first or maybe they've had a really rubbish morning up till then or a rubbish week 
and they come and they're just happy to see other people that will ask them how they are. They, they relax, they enjoy it, they see the animals and by the time we're sat down eating cake and drinking tea, everyone's having such a lovely time. More often than not they will present here and you can see there's a little bit of discomfort and there's a little bit of what am I doing here, where am I, why are the children running around and what's with the teepees and the lights and things. But then there's a, it's, it's, it's almost tangible this moment where there's a sense of ease and comfort. Relax, totally, just wander about. We all had a lovely time when we came. I, I haven't had a time that I've been here that I haven't enjoyed myself. It's lovely. The training that we do with the organisations um, is to help people look at what some of the challenges might be if you are a person living with dementia. Paula and I have been going round doing sort of training to say how important it is to get people outside in the fresh air. They've learned so much from having a person with dementia present. I like, I like people to ask me questions um, and I'll answer honestly. For me, the standout training was thinking differently about dementia. It, it's just an individual living with dementia. There's no, they will all be, expect always this. You know, everybody's unique. Get to my age and you're still doing things that you've never done before. I've never done anything like this before. It's very important to us that we can. So whether it's raining or sunshine, it's just it's a lovely couple of hours to look forward to every week. If I'm feeling good when I leave here, hopefully on a Tuesday they're all feeling good as well. It's very entertaining. I, th I think it's been great. I'm, I just regret I haven't been before. Yeah, you know, I'd like to have come, well, come again. Bernard I pick up every month and for the past three months he's stood at the door waiting for me and he'll tip his head and say I remember you Sarah which is just I mean it's just amazing and it's been really good fun you know going somewhere doing something completely different it has been a real privilege and it's been brilliant to be part of that journey with people and just be part of Dementia Adventure making a difference to people and and getting um, getting the message about being outdoors to more people. So a really, a really powerful film there with some, some lovely images and, and you're welcome to ask the panel um, some questions you might have about, about that later. But uh, one thing's for sure, we saw so many marshmallows there. Uh, maybe your appetites all, all got going for those. So um, there were many different experiences across the project, both, both indoors and outdoors. And what we'd like to do is just share some of the comments from people with you in these next few few slides. So this one from, from a gentleman living with dementia and talking about um, his experience on a care farm. It's been a godsend. I swear blind, I don't think I've got Alzheimer's anymore. I seem to remember things that I didn't before. I wasn't doing much and as my son says to me, if you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> so um, that, that was one, one there. And this, this comment here, this um, from comment made by a staff member about what a carer said about her husband after a session in a care farm. And I'll leave, I'll leave you to read this one for yourself. And it ends just saying, it was just beautiful. There were no issues of vulnerability. He was, there was no dementia, he was just himself. So really, really lovely comment there. And then, and then finally, from, from a carer's perspective, a really moving comment that just reflects how lonely and isolating it can be as a carer. 
and, um, and maybe something we can all relate to, particularly around, around lockdown. It's like I'd forgotten how to chat. So obviously creating such lovely experiences for people to build that confidence um, as a carer to, to connect with people and um, their community more. So my last two slides, uh, just to finish, was I wanted to pick up on some key points and learning from the project. So um, we've drawn these points from the summary from the two under project reports, which will be on our website after, after this webinar. So uh, if you want to read more, you can look in there. But um, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to pick out a couple here. And uh, back to that point I made earlier about um, co-production, get people around the table and get talking from the start. We need to put the wishes and needs of people with living with dementia right at the start. We need to find out what's important to them, what matters, and also how to make it work properly. So um, what we would do, we would be talking with care farms and TCB who might not have so much experience for that about how to make contact with people in the community, how to approach um, and things that might need to be done, changes that might need to be, be made. So that was that part of it. Another point to pick up was um, how when you bring, bring people together from different sectors, so you bring someone from the care sector together with somebody from the green sector, you really add to those, um, to those skills and that really brings in benefits. So it might be that uh, you have a fantastic care farm um, or a beautiful park and people running a project there, they can provide a lovely setting and experience, but how do they reach out to people in their community? How do we link people together? And that's where that partnership comes in, because when you make that connection and link in, you can bring people and places together. So it's that cross sector working that um, is absolutely key and people couldn't do, do it on their own. And then in terms of learning, again, lots of things to learn, obviously, from a project that ran over three years. And I'm sure Paula can pick up on some of these things for us. But again, just a, a couple of points. Um, I think one of the things that, that we found in, in terms of challenge really was that there are, we know there are huge benefits from contact with nature and time outside, but, but not everyone else does. So how do we pass that message on to family carers, other partners and to, to funders in the area? Um, how do we get them to see the importance of it? And it is through programmes like this showing how you can set things up, not just locally, but also at a sort of regional level or even nationally. Um, it's projects like this that, and with films and the learning from it that can pave the way for that cultural shift and to start to win hearts and minds. The other, perhaps another learning point to pick up from here is um, I put building resilience for staff and volunteer change in projects. And what I mean by that is that staff and volunteer turnover can be quite high with some of the organisations um, on this project and it that is simply down to the nature and funding models of some of the partners and that um, that turnover so perhaps you know one of the takeaways for, for us was we needed to build in access to resources and funding and budgeting that for refresher training as well as um, new training to for skills and best practice for, for new staff and volunteers so that, that, that was just a little summary from, from me and a couple, couple of films to highlight what the project was about. Um, what we're now going to do is hear two case studies and um, I'm going to pass over to Sarah McCormack, who's really kindly joined us from the Methodist Homes Association. You've already seen um, Sarah in the film and one of the projects she was involved in. So MHA are a national organization, a, a large one. They run care homes, retirement living, and also community live at home schemes, if you haven't heard of those, which are the live at home schemes support residents in the community through a membership scheme, which um, Sarah was part of supporting. So yes, Sarah is um, gonna talk about what they did in Leeds South, as it's called, and she's going to talk about what she did with the Dementia Adventure Project. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Um, so yes, the Live at Home scheme, um, we got in touch with an enterprise called This Green Moon, um, a remarkable enterprise really that was set out in some beautiful ancient woodlands in Leeds. Um, they hosted lots of activities and events for children and older people as well, so it was a wedding venue, concerts, residentials, um, school trips, all kinds of things really. 
So because we knew they worked alongside children, um, I got in touch with them to see if they'd be interested in running some intergenerational classes, um, in particular for our members who were living with dementia and their carers. Um, very luckily for MHA, they said yes. Um, so once a month for a few hours, um, Ash and Paul, who were the owners of this Green Moon, um, would attend alongside a group of preschool children and their parents and carers. Um, and then a group of our members who were living with dementia and their carers would come along. And for those few hours, we would sit in this most beautiful part of the world in and amongst the forest and we'd create lots of different forest activities so you know one month we created dream catchers uh, one month it was stick men one month we helped to build a fence with wood bark and branches um, one month paul and ash had created puzzles out of wood for us and the children to kind of try and fathom through um, we'd sit and drink tea and eat warm cake and sit around a log fire and toast marshmallows and sing songs and you know it was just beautiful and you know you could get up and go for lovely walks and watch the cloud formations and listen to the bird song it was just you know it was a remarkable few hours that just went by in the blink of an eye um so for me the thing that i felt worked the best was the actual aspect of the intergenerational work so you were watching these children who are free spirits, no filter, asking questions and getting stuck in and to be able to witness our members and their carers just relax and laugh, um, you know, and just work alongside each other, learning new skills, remembering old ones. Um, it, it was really, really priceless. Um, and also I think something that you know, a lot of the feedback that we got, particularly from our, the carers of our members, was that it offered them respite almost, because as much as, you know, everybody would get involved in the activities, it was a safe place. It was a, it was a forum for carers to talk along with other carers about any difficulties they were facing, share experiences, you know, talk about different services and things that were available for them. So I know that they found that really, really beneficial. Um, so the learning that I took from it personally was I had completely underestimated the power of being outdoors, um, you know, being at one with nature. Being outside for anybody is, is, you know, is so important for your physical well-being, your mental, emotional well-being, but particularly for our members who were living with dementia, this was something completely different. These forest activities were, you know, new to everybody there. Um, so their daughters and wives and husbands would ring the office and say, wow, Sarah, they've slept so well, they've, they've eaten so well, you know, they're, they're generally happier. And that's a few hours, you know, at nature, looking at insects with children and picking flowers and talking about the birds and things. And um, yeah, that was, that was not only learning, but certainly priceless for me. Um, and I guess going forward, any tips or advice I'd say to anybody that's thinking of taking, you know, doing something like this, first and foremost, it's invaluable. Um, and I highly recommend it. I miss it greatly. I really do miss it. But get to know your local area. Um, Admittedly, I didn't know about this green moon, so it took a lot of research and, and luckily they were exceptional, they were absolutely brilliant, but also it doesn't have to be anything too out of the box, you know, for a few hours every month we would visit this green moon for one week and then the following week the same members and carers, we'd go for a walk around our local RSPB park, just as important, just as enjoyable, out in the great outdoors with the nature and wildlife, you know, so yeah, that's that would be my tips going forward. And also if you can, um, take advantage of the training, if there's training available, because for me it was invaluable. As I said in the, in the clip, thinking differently about dementia, yeah, was just really important because every member, every person is, a, is, is an individual. So not everyone's going to have the same trait or characteristic. And 
I really benefited from that. So, um, so yeah, it's just something that I, I, it was just a total joy to do and be part of. Thanks, Sarah. And anything else you want to add to that, or um, are we? No, I think I think that's everything. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I I was really lucky to be up with Sarah uh, with some with some of the training, and um, thank you. You brought up some really really important points with that. Um, I'm not going to pick up on all of them, but I mean, you talked about the importance and power of nature, and and also about keeping it local, not making it too complicated and um, really lovely to get a flavour of your project. And um, I hope everybody realises that those um, gorgeous pictures uh, on, on the screen are from, from Sarah's project there. So thank you, Sarah, and we'll, we'll be coming back to you at, at the panel thank you. as well. OK, so um, so that was Sarah from the Methodist Homes Association. And I now want to introduce Jerry. And um, Jerry is from um, Scrub Ditch Care Farm, which you can see there in, in Gloucestershire. And uh, Jerry was already supporting groups at the care farm, um, but wanted to widen the offer to people living with dementia and, and family members. And, and, and Jerry is here to talk us through how she started from scratch and that sort of that nitty gritty detail um, about how how to get how people got involved. And um, we, we will be taking questions about both these projects uh, when we take um, a break after this. So um, I'll pass you over to Jerry now. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Kath. Hi, everybody. Um, yes, so I'm from Scrub Ditch Care Farm near Sirencester in Gloucestershire. And we've been running for just over 10 years now. Uh, we're a registered charity and we uh, provide um, farm based activities and training, mainly for people with learning difficulties. So that's what we've been doing since day one. Uh, we also have school groups, special needs school groups that come to us, support groups, um, all sorts of other children's activities and school holidays. We try and cater for everybody, as our statement says there, therapeutic farm based training activities for vulnerable people, trying to keep it open to everybody. Um, and about three years ago now, we were given the opportunity to join the Dementia Adventure Project, which we were really keen to do. We'd been talking about people living with dementia and how to um, support them in some way for a while, but we just hadn't worked out um, how we could do that. We're coming at it from a different angle than Sarah. Sarah obviously had the people and was looking for the activities. We kind of had the activities, but didn't have the people. So um, totally differently, we, we started on our hunt for people. Um, we focus on increasing confidence, building independence and promoting good health and well-being. That's for everybody that comes. As Kath has mentioned um, and Sarah, you know, being outdoors does everyone the world of good. It, it, doing meaningful activities, having a bit of purpose, looking after animals, growing vegetables. It just promotes such good self-esteem and gives a good feeling of worth um, that you know, we see the benefits of people that come every day, no matter what. Um, problems or issues they attend with, if they sort of melt away when they're doing all these activities and tasks. Thanks, Kath. Um, so we began in 2018 with our Feel Good Farming Dementia Days, we called our sessions. Um, primarily it's because we'd had one of our volunteers who was diagnosed with dementia and sadly uh, became unwell and passed away quite quickly. And we were conscious that it really benefited him to spend time at the care farm. So we wanted to do something for other people that enjoyed being outdoors and maybe didn't enjoy all the indoor groups that were available. There isn't anything else like it in our local area. So uh, we started these sessions, which um, we do all sorts of things in. I think if we carry on, we'll see some more pictures of, of the type of things we get up to. Oh, a quick look at our flyer first. Um, I created the flyer with plenty of pictures on. That's one of my tips. Make sure you've got pictures for people to see. I think everybody likes to know what they're coming to and what they might do. So we make sure we've got plenty of information on our flyer, um, lots of pictures, easy contact details. And uh, I think it's really important that people understand what they might be joining it, and they find it much more encouraging if they've got a good understanding of what, what goes on at these sessions and who they're gonna meet there. Thank you. <laughs> Here we are. Here's some of some of our animals, which you saw in the video. The chickens are great. Uh, it's really easy to get hands on with chickens because, as you can see, you can tuck one under your arm and put one on your shoulder. Even they 
and really nice and easy to handle. And you'd be amazed how many people in their lives have had chickens or remember doing something with chickens and aren't a grandparent, whatever. So they're a really good talking point that you can get up and close um, with them, feed them, collect the eggs. Everybody enjoys spending time with the chickens. It's the first job we do when everyone arrives at the farm. <laughs> Thanks, Kath. Uh, and the sheep. So we've got a lovely little flock of sheep, which people are able to get hands on with as well. We round them up, we treat them if they've got any, that's what's happening at the bottom of the screen there. <laughs> um, lots of feeding, as you can see, they're keen to get their food from your hand. Um, and it's really nice for people maybe have grown up in the countryside uh, or even on a farm, worked on farms. Um, and like I said earlier, it's meaningful, it's purposeful, and everyone feels like they've done something to help, which just is that bit more rewarding than maybe looking at something it, it, it's different for everybody but they really enjoy doing something helpful which we try and provide thank you we've got various other animals uh, the horse is what we call a therapy horse because he's very well retired um, but he gets lots of fuss and again a firm favorite because many people have, have done riding in their lives um, looked after horses but maybe can't have horses close to them so it just offers that opportunity to spend some time with animals Equally dogs, if people are uh, not got dogs in their lives anymore, but have enjoyed having a dog. Um, we take the dog for a walk, we fuss the dog, all the animals get plenty of fuss. Um, the horse has people lined up in front of him with carrots every Tuesday morning, so he's very spoiled indeed. But we found that people just, it's great conversation starters. It's a great distraction, as the gentleman said earlier in the video, you know, looking at nature is such a distraction. It makes you forget all your worries. And that's what the animals seem to do for people. Thank you. And these ones always distract people. Um, they're ever so cute. Obviously, we don't have them all the time. We've got some great big, I didn't bother putting the big pigs in. Sorry, big pigs. Um, lots of, of hands-on stuff, which is really, really nice for people. Again, it creates, uh, of course, brings up memories and gives people things to talk about. And nice experiences to go away and share with their families. People quite often bring their sons, they come with a carer, so it might be their wife or husband or their children or a paid companion, but they also have brought their children at other times, they've brought grandchildren with them to share the experience with the rest of their family, which is really nice and what we hoped to promote within our group to make it a friendship group as well as an activity. Thank you. We were also very conscious the part of the world we're in is, is quite a, an older um, sort of population. So uh, we've got mainly older people living with dementia that come to us. So we're very conscious that maybe they can't get around the farm as well as some of the younger people. It can be a bit uneven underfoot. So we make sure we've got animals that we can bring to people because that means that everyone gets the experience. It's one of the ducks having a stroke. And we've got hold to train sheep so everyone can get hands on with those as well. We just don't want anyone to miss out. And I think the most important thing when you're trying to do activities like these is that thinking outside the box to make sure everyone gets to be involved in some way. We've got to just try some different things. <laughs> Thank you. And lots of growing vegetables. That's the other thing we do. We grow vegetables to sell. Um, as a registered charity, we're always trying to make money, but also it's really nice for some of these folk who maybe have downsized where they live and don't have a garden anymore. It's such good therapy doing a bit of gardening, you, you know, and it's a really nice way to have a chat whilst you're doing it. Uh, and also we've uh, regular visitors of which we sort of tend to have between 12 and 20 um, each week. They like to buy our produce, so they've helped to grow it and then they buy some to take home. So that's the eggs, the vegetables, some meat. Um, at Christmas time, we have Christmas cards and things like that that they buy too. So they're really part of the whole organisation, which makes them feel quite proud as well, which I think is really nice. Thank you. And then sometimes they're just downright silly and do things like this and put buckets on their heads. We, what we have discovered that we didn't realise would happen is that they would grow such great friendships. We started up thinking we would run a fortnightly group, which would be really nice for people that liked animals to come and see some animals pretty much on a farm. What we found is that these people became really good friends. The carers support each other with all sorts of things like setting up new mobile phones and doing all kinds of stuff. They lend DVDs to each other. They meet up away from the farm as well. And everyone just enjoys spending time together, which is so nice. And it's now a weekly thing that we virtually don't take a break from. We shut, stop Christmas and Easter and, and lockdown. And that's about it. Um, 
we're there every week and rain or shine because people just really enjoy each other's company, which is lovely, as well as being outdoors and the animals, obviously. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, that's just a little card that we had saying um, how grateful they were. And it, it means so much because, um, like Sarah said, she, you know, she misses it. I, I miss it when I'm not there. I, it's such an enjoyable time. There's such a lovely bunch of folk that we have coming regularly to us. And I think because they're enjoying it and you're enjoying it, it just makes the whole experience so lovely, as well as being outside with the animals and in the fresh air and the wildlife and things. It really does. Um, other things that I would mention, kind of as like Sarah did some tips and things, the things that we found hard were maybe uh, not hard, but we're going to be a struggling point where we're funding. Uh, we're a registered charity. We have to fund everything that happens with us. Um, we it was really important for us that we didn't want to charge anybody to come because I think uh, there's already enough hurdles to be getting over. So we fund it um, through grants, which I apply for, which pays for staffing and refreshments, and then people can attend for free, um, which it just takes down one of the barriers. Because of where we are, travel and transport can be an issue, which unfortunately we're not in a position to overcome, but I know other organisations would be. Um, the weather can be a bit of an issue, but we just kind of battle through and stay in the barn and drink tea and eat cake when that happens. <laughs> just throw some food out to the animals and then dive back in for the tea and cake. Um, and, you know, there's lots of challenges, but I think that three years on, we're, we're, we're doing so well and we've got through, I'm just looking at my sheets, we've raised £11,000 in grants to cover all our, our costings and we're still going and people are still willing to support us. It just shows how valuable it is and that there is support for these type of activities out there. It just it is hard work to find it, but it's so worth it. Thank you. Jerry, thank you so very much. Uh, and, and Sarah too, some, some very different projects um, with amazing outcomes, um, both incredibly powerful. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. And I know some of the questions we've been getting in, you, you've already answered those questions, or I think you've started to really get getting them to think about it. So I'm sure we'll have some more coming in. Um, and uh, just to let you know that uh, we have Teresa uh, on the call today, who was part of our evaluation team from the University of Worcester. Uh, thank you, Teresa, for your, for your comments, um, because people really have been commenting about what's been going on here this afternoon. That's absolutely amazing. And more more about the evaluation will be in the report that's actually on our website so please do link in with that uh, if you want to know more. So just I think it's a great time to take a couple of questions um, and, and actually I'm going to pose the first one to Lorraine. Uh, I hope you don't mind Lorraine being, being first on the spot but we've heard so much about the importance of spending time outside and getting close to nature. But Lorraine, from your perspective, can you tell us the importance of nature to you, maybe just getting out into your garden? Well, the importance of getting out into nature to me as a person with dementia is more than, more than it's ever been now. Um, during lockdown, um, I am fortunate enough to have a garden um, it was a real pleasure just to watch the birds uh, pecking from the bird sanctuary and having a splash about in the bird baths and actually taking in the, the beautiful flowers and watching, the, watching the, um, the trees and everything else and listening to the birds, listening to the sounds. Um, I, I live on my own and um, the one thing I do, which I do appreciate my garden is because I get lost very, very easily. Um, I did have a, I did go out to my local woods and it was horrendous because I didn't realize there was a different uh, exit. So it was, I, I got there in the end, but, um, that's why I do value dementia adventure because um, they can actually support people with dementia. And what is most important, if people do live on their own, um, transport is problematic for a lot of us because I, I still have my 
driving license and assessment every six months. But um, for, for I know it's one day it will be taken away. So all you all you lovely people out there, take note what I'm saying. And it's wonderful to see all these farm animals and places. But for a person that doesn't drive, transport is paramount. Lorraine, thank you so much. And, and actually, if you uh, go back to one of our other pieces of research, is it nice outside? Again, on our website, mm -hmm. transport is a really big issue for many people. So um, certainly, Lorraine, thank you. Some incredibly wise words there. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Paula, I think this pos this next one possibly is for you. Um, uh, can you tell us a bit about some of the challenges and the learning from your point of view of, of managing a project like this? Yeah, sure. Hello, everyone. Um, I think there were many challenges and much learning. Um, I would say one was that although it was one project, we were working for pretty diverse organisations. And I think it was it, it was actually looking at the project almost as four different projects and being aware of the kind of issues and challenges for each organisation. Um, I think learning, um, you would definitely see within the organisations, those who were so the green space organisations were very comfortable with risk, with doing things outside, with having lots of creative ideas. Um, and the other organisations were less comfortable with that, but maybe had had more experience working with people living with dementia. And so it was, it was looking at how to kind of meet the needs, the different needs of the different organisations. Um, I think challenges were for the organisations, finding people, starting something from scratch is very different to building on something that you already have. So, um, you know, what are the specific kind of questions and needs, um, particularly around training that organisations would need? Um, guidance around uh, connecting with other organisations, things that they need to think about. Um, I think that I always love the comment in the film that Sarah makes about the, the thinking about thinking differently about dementia training. Um, in that it, you know, that was her, her kind of standout training, because I think there are organisations out there and things that are happening um, but, but one thing that we perhaps were able to do was to challenge and make people look at uh, living with dementia in a slightly different way and kind of push the, push the boundaries in terms of activities and, and ideas. Um, so I did, uh, I had written down some... Um, You've got a crib sheet there, haven't you? I have got a crib sheet, yeah. It, uh, yeah, I think... Managing the project, one of the challenges was um, it's, it's difficult because the organisations had chosen their locations and chosen their delegates um, before the project kind of really got underway. And I think there were some challenges around people being involved who didn't necessarily want to be, didn't have the time to be who was coordinating it within the organisations, that was definitely something um, to think about. Um, having supportive managers in place and people having the time to deliver the activities. Funding was an issue for organisations. I think with hindsight, um, we would have done better to put some upfront funding straight away to help get the activities off the ground. Um, having said that, you know, maybe Jerry would say the fact that funding wasn't there forced her to get funding for herself and then that potentially makes it more sustainable. So, you know, you could, you could look at that two ways. Um, yeah, I think that... Uh, 
Paula, I just think that's amazing because it, it's giving people tips and it's all about the learning from our project, maybe helping people and, and not falling into the same gaps that we did, uh, having that fulfilled straight away. So Paula, thank you so much. We will come back and have a few more questions uh, in a few slides time, but we wanted to just touch on the legacy from Dementia Adventure because we really have learned so very much as, as Paula was really indicating there. And we've really taken on that learning. Um, and one of the big things for us is actually we've created um, around 60 short films, really hearing the voices of people living with dementia as they shared their life experience, giving insightful tips and strategies. And we're already starting to use those in our training. So the training that Jerry and Sarah had, we've already added to that. We're, and we're really pleased to, to, to have introduced the, these films. We're continuing our journey with some of our existing partners and we're really excited to be able to do that. But we are now looking to develop new partnerships across the UK um, with, with many people. And actually one of the questions we had is where are we? We're, we're, we're Essex, but we have a national reach and we really do want to reach out across the whole of the UK. So, you know, if you have an idea and you want a bit of assistance and guidance, or if you want to expand on an existing programme, then maybe we're the people that might be able to help you to do that. We really do believe that everyone living with dementia should have the opportunity to get out into nature and, and be able to do it on their doorstep. And we really do need help to make that happen. So please do get in contact with us. As well as continuing the work with partners, we have some free, and I, I should have highlighted the free and underlined it, online training that actually everyone can access. We've created a series of dementia skill sessions. Uh, they can be accessed through our website. Uh, so please do take a look at our website. We're running one of these at least once a week. And we're even running evening sessions. So if you find during the days difficult, please do still have a look. Uh, the Thinking Differently About Dementia session was originally created for family and friends of a person living with dementia. We've opened this up now for professionals and volunteers, and we want to spread the learning as far and wide as we possibly can. And this session really considers what it might mean to live with dementia and some strategies that will help you remain connected. We also consider the importance of contact with nature um, and the health and well-being benefits. And actually, one of the questions we had was actually, how do we get families to to look at that risk in a more positive way? Uh, actually, we encourage people to come to our sessions and we really do advocate that. I, I cannot stress that enough. We've also created a time in nature session. Again, it, this, is, this is absolutely free and it's created for professionals and volunteers to look at setting up nature experiences and to start considering some of the key points to success. Uh, and we are developing two new sessions, mood and motivation and getting out and about. And these will be available free online uh, in the new year. So even if you've linked in with us now, come back again in the new year uh, and, and see what else we have to offer. Um, what I wanted to do next was really to introduce uh, another film that we have. And, and this is uh, Nancy. She has a great connection to the outdoors and gardening. But she also has other things in her life that are really important to her. And I think a key message from Dementia Adventure is, you know, can we advocate what a person can do, really encouraging them to do and to continue to do uh, the things that they love? Thank you, Kath. Keep doing the things you love. That's what's important to you. So keep doing the things that you love. I mean, I love doing the gardening. There's lots of things to do. You know, we're also kind of foolish and we don't even think about it. I used to do knitting, uh, but when I went knitting, I was drinking beer at the same time in a pub. Uh, and then my two knitting buddies, one, one went off to America and one went to Saudi Arabia. So I just lost them instantly. So I, I lost my two knitting buddies. So I kind of almost stopped knitting because of that. Isn't that ridiculous? The other thing I do is I, I, I used to do, I used to make patchworks. So I think when I'm looking for some 
thing to do, I would go back to my patchwork and I would repair a bit of the patchwork that needs repairing. As I love, I know, I, I just love, and I love just, just the little bits of sewing, you know, and I can enjoy doing that very much so. And as this indoors or outdoors, it doesn't really matter. Here we go, here's the patchwork, but you're not getting a good view of it, really, because it's just a small corner I'm showing you. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. It's lovely, isn't it? It's quite, they're quite gorgeous. They're quite gorgeous things, aren't they? There we go. One patchwork. <laughs> I feel very pleased that I'm able to do those kind of things again. But of course, because the patchworks take a great deal of working out when you're making a patchwork, and it takes a great deal of measuring and fixing. And sometimes I'm, I now can't do that. It's a great sadness. Lovely. Uh, she is. A, a few of you have actually put online, you know, uh, she is an amazing woman. Absolutely amazing. Um, I think we will, uh, we're getting short on time. We have a few more things just to discuss with you and a few more questions to take. And um, people really have been uh, putting online, you know, how do we connect with you? Uh, we, bear with us. We've, we've got a slide with how to connect with us. Uh, we really would like to work with people um, across the UK. Um, and another question someone's actually asked, the evaluated project. Actually, what training did people undertake? And, and we laid on four days worth of individual days of training, looking at thinking differently about dementia, taking calculated risks, uh, connecting with nature and, you know, maybe sometimes even bringing nature in. So the, but I think what's key for Dementia Adventure is we look at what your goals and objectives are and we help you to come up with a training package that suits your needs. Uh, that, that's really key for us. Now, a couple of other questions that have come in, and I think possibly this one is possibly uh, aimed for Jerry. I think. Jerry, can I ask you, how did you reach out to people in your community to actually come and join uh, your experiences on the farm? Uh, so we got ourselves in the local paper. That was the, the easiest thing to do, first of all. Um, lots of social media sharing, because that kind of filters through a lot of people. And eventually somebody who knows someone who knows someone mentions it to someone. And we also connected with our local um, Alzheimer's Society dementia advisor, who's fantastic. And she basically, every new uh, referral she has, every new person she meets, she mentions us. And if it appeals to them, then she helps them to get in touch with us. You know, it's not for everybody. Not everybody wants to go tramping around a farm. But um, the ones that do, she points them in the right direction. We also sent all our information to all the local GP surgeries and you know the, the council and just and the local village newsletters, anywhere like that we could get the word out. That was the best way. That's lovely. Uh, thank you, Jerry. And, and it's individual for, for each person. Um, someone once told me a little while ago, actually, you find the right person in your locality and they can really help you to spread the word. Uh, carers organisations are also often quite good at, at helping you disseminate. So, Jerry, thank you for that. And um, Paula, I'm going to ask the last uh, question to you. And I'm, I'm really sorry, we, we, we're not going to get through all the questions today. Um, but can I ask you, what stood out for you in this project? Of everything that was achieved, what would you say was a real golden moment? Um, I think overall for me, it, it's the legacy of the project. And because I had the overview of the whole country and seen all the different organisations, and um, I think it's the movement that people made from I'm not sure if this is something I can do. I don't know how this is going to work, or I'm really not going to, you know, I'm not going to be able to see this happening in my organisation. And the movement that people made, and the sense of joy and achievement, and I think you know, Sarah sums that up really well in the video. Um, but seeing people overcome challenges. And then understanding some things from the training, putting, putting it into practice and knowing that those activities are still going on across the country, that more are being developed. And it's, I think it's, yeah, for me, looking at the, the legacy and the catalyst that the, the project made. 
Paula, thank you so much. And that really is key that, you know, a lot of these projects are still continuing and we're looking at developing that with, with new partners too. So yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, Kath, if you could move us to our last slide, uh, please, because a lot of people have been saying, you know, we really want to know more. We want to link in with Dementia Adventure. Um, and please do. I think this is really key for us. Get in contact with us, uh, a phone call, an email. Absolutely. You know, there's no cost involved at all. But do get in contact with us. Let us know what you're looking to do and see if you, we can we can help you. So it's just for me to say a really big thank you to all of our panel for being part of the project for one, but again for giving up their time today to come and really tell us, um, you know, how powerful those projects were. Thank you so very much. Please do link in with us uh, through social media. Uh, get in contact with us via one of the methods on screen. Link into us via our newsletter, which uh, is on our website. And it's just from us on the panel to wish you all very well with your projects of the future. Uh, and I will now end the webinar today.